because you did the full like yeah well first of all and let's I forgot just to go watch it let's just say that we'll begin and i'm gonna once again i'm once again asking who wants to do the catch-up but if you don't obviously i can do the catch-up um well i can um, have a They'll go at it. Um, as always, I remember the end of the session and not so much the start. <laughs> it's because I always um, drop those bombshells at the end. Yeah, there was... Uh, well, we finished <clears throat> uh, dealing with the Kraken in the previous sessions. Mm -hmm. We returned to <clears throat> the uh, life we once knew after exiting Mistress Dungeon Extraordinaire. And, um, well, uh, we went on our merry way to go on a diplomatic mission. And, uh, uh, this uh, involved quite a tense conversation at the end, but before that, uh, there was uh, well, some scouts came to meet us, and uh, we talked to the scouts, and of course, uh, Macro immediately made himself uh, <clears throat> popular. <laughs> You're also forgetting about the teleportation jamboree that everyone went on. I mean, yes, but that was just downtime. <laughs> no, he, he teleported people, uh, all in teleported people to Ragnark, whereupon they actually met, um, briefly, Dolaf's mother. Um, there was some um, exchange there, and then they teleported to Phoebo, where Phoebo seems to be under some sort of forbidden spell where you cannot teleport into the city, so it shunted you outside of the city where Dolaf's camp happened to be, which you had no clue about, and you were chased by Dolaf's cousin, Early Aiden, who Meteor, well, after you teleported back to the conservatory, Meteor showered it, and Owen sacrificed his new simulacrum to save everybody. Afterwards, you actually met Early Aiden, who seemed to not actually want to fight you after just trying to destroy you, and called quits and teleported away. Uh, the group then... Oh yeah, at the beginning of the session we forgot that the group obviously witnessed one dr and Lantix taking off in their new rocket off into space. Um, then we teleported towards Nadina Gravewarden's uh, camp upon which you failed a teleportation check and you had to find your own way then. It took a, a good part of a day's travel and like you said Arne, we met some scouts. Um, I prefer succeeded in an alternative way. <laughs> you can think what you want, but it failed, and you know it did. Yeah, yeah and um, well, after uh, ensuring that we would not have Macra, Elseth, or Maisie with us when we went to have these discussions, as uh, that would not have gone down well, we had a conversation. Uh, Eventually, with uh, with her, and returned uh, a spell book that belonged to the family to her, and she was quite well melodramatic, melancholic, <laughs> depressed. Kind of just gave in to the dark side and uh, decided, well. There's no point to all of this, so I might as well just join with uh, the boys in yellow. The boys in yellow. Well, she said she hadn't made up her mind. She said that well. she'd received a letter, and after receiving the letter, was going to uh, going to consider it. But as she said that, Olaf Erinspire walked in to the actual mm -hmm. uh, caravan. The large wagon that Nadina had been in. She had mentioned that, you know, with her brother gone, with her father gone, she had nothing to live for. And this Dolaf had promised her that he could bring them back, or at least in a semblance of a way. She had mm -hmm. said that, what could you promise that he couldn't? And she also mentioned that, of course, she's part of the Broken Empire, um, which... One one detail we forgot to mention as well. Of course, Lady Greenridge is at the rear of the um, the army's trail, being that she's technically now the queen of the Broken Empire, since she's married to the God King's son now. Mm -hmm. But we left Macra and Elzef and Maisie with Lady Greenridge as she was setting up her tent. 
So I think today, before we move over to the diplomats in the wagon, we'll go to Makra, Elza for Maisie, inside the great uh, kind of purple and black tent. Finally, a large table is brought in and foods and drinks are being brought in by servants. Lady Greenridge sits in a high backed chair of black kind of like ebony wood and she sips from a goblet and swirls what looks like some um, some wine and she just stares at you all as you begin to acclimatise yourself inside. Is so, what happened to that dwarf that you used to travel with, Makra? Have you seen her lately? Not lately. I'm pretty sure she's still uh, wandering the wilderness, trying to hatch a plan to assassinate you. I think she might be with Chester Dacker, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, Chester. Funny fellow him. Albeit annoying. Hmm. Hmm. And who's this? She indicates Maisie with one hand, and those of you who are perceptive notice the long, painted black nails she, she has. Someone we picked up on the road. Oh, I'm guilty. At a terrible disadvantage. Uh, Maisie, pleasure to meet you. Lady Greenridge. You are quite glamorous, I must say. She smiles, showing slightly pointed teeth. She says, Why, thank you, dear. I haven't been out very much, and I can't do very much for this group, but I must say, it has been an awfully fantastic adventure travelling alongside them. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure it is. He smiles. Well, Makra here is the only one that I am acclimatised to. And I'm sure he's forgiven me for the social, so, social faux pas of attempting to kill his family. Oh. He's very relaxed about matters concerning his family. <laughs> 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 well, I'd like to take the opportunity here, Macra, to apologise. Those vampires I sided with then took it too far. I never expected them to do what they did to the Ironblood family. Yeah, and after the Ironblood family. <laughs> She drinks from her um, goblet and places it down. It's funny because dwarfs died. I'm at a real loss here. Um, what are we doing exactly? We're, we're having dinner, Macy. Right. Right you are. Just but, a little... Because Macro is considered too stupid to help with diplomacy, you're considered a wild card, and they know I will insult whoever we meet, so... Seems fair. And why are you here, Lady Greenwich? I was sent by my husband to make sure that Nadina does not engage in any outwardly activity with our enemies to the south and our enemies to the west. However, it seems that her bodyguard, Issa, does not like me very much, and I am not allowed to be anywhere near the wagon, so from a distance, I keep an eye. Something to do with the Ironblood family and Issa being a good friend of Grildar. Right. Yes. I guess makes perfect sense. So, what, what's the crack then? Are you, are you like, actually evil? Evil. Oh, you can't, you can't just ask someone, Macro, if they're evil while they're eating beans from a dinner plate. No, no, no. I appreciate how forward Macro can be. Let me tell racial, you. Like racial biases, like most of like our people, you kind of just like. You know, like bugbears. Yeah. So he's, he's waiting for like, some acknowledgement off you. Like, we're considered, like, the bad guys, historically, I guess. She's a fucking dragon. Oh, bad macra. Bad. I just called someone a fucking dragon, Macra. Yeah, Macra, please, if you're going to take the shovel and dig yourself a hole, 
maybe don't get the pneumatic drill and sellotape it to that as well. So, the dragon's actually evil? Oh, I'm evil. Oh. She smiles, and I revel in it. Why should I lie to you? You've seen me in many of my forms. I even sunk um, your ship and killed many of your friends, did I not? May I ask a question? You may. What's this dragon business? Is it like a title or like a cosplay name? Yes, it's a title like Queen. Oh. Or Empress. So actually a dragon, that would be silly. Uh, well, let me tell you. That dwarf that they were friends with, Maisie, her clan smoked me and my brood out of our isles. Killed every one of my children. And as I fled, they still pursued me. But I came back, and I killed all of her clan. Now it's just me, and now it's just her. Oh. I, um... Sounds intense. It does sound very. Intense. If you ask me, it sounds like the beginning of a brilliant buddy cop movie, but he can't seem to get past it. She kind of giggles at what you say and says, "Well, I wonder how the diplomacy's going. You know, Dolaf Erinspire is here in camp. Maybe a bit mentally, isn't he?" Oh, yes. And at that moment, she says, oh, do come in. And behind you, you will see a uh, female, uh, red hair tied up into a bun, uh, messy around the sides. She walks in with an air of kind of power. And she's wearing a half a set of half plate uh, with a long cape of yellow and red, slashed with red. And there's a palpable heat coming off of her. And Lady Greenwich stands and says, I am. I'm glad to host you. Iliana of Volfield. She lets out a slight bow. The woman looks to the right, sees you all. And she has like a great sword in a sheath and she just takes it off and drops to the ground, sits down. Yeah, it's no problem, of course. And begins eating, like straight away. Who are these? And Lady Groomage introduces you one by one and then introduces you to Iliana. This is a general and a personal bodyguard of Dolaf. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, don't, don't eat those beans. I'm, I'm saving them. She goes to reach for them. Oh. Bold move. She takes them. I can't help but feel that we've been put in the wrong tent. Yeah, this is the tent with not enough beans for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Ileana finishes eating up and drinking, slurping, and then she wipes her mouth and goes, So, I hear some of you um, come across my husband earlier today. He told me excitedly how he tried to crush you beneath rocks. Fiery rocks. <laughs> That's what points up Maisie. <laughs> uh, Ileana looks straight at Maisie. Who are you? Why do um, you smell slightly like him? She stands up, almost feline-like, and begins sniffing the side of your face. Oh, um, <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. And she's like slowly pushes her hand on her face and just pushes her away from her face. Yep. Um, uh, I, I don't know the answers to any of your questions, I'm afraid. Um, actually, I'm a little unnerved by you, if truth be told. Most people are. It takes a lot to be married to someone like him. But I know him inside out. I know everything. And then she looks that around her. The back of her hand up and just says to her, who's him? I don't know, but she seems to have had sex with whoever it is. Look! <laughs> 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 Ileana puts both hand, my old hands up. I'm saying that my husband tried to meet you or shower you earlier this morning. No, sorry, drawing a blank. Oh, is he, really? Is he an important person? No, that's okay. She sits down and begins eating again. We, we just get meteor shots so often we just can't keep track of it, you know? Oh, uh, well, look, I know we're at war, but uh, we can be nice here at the table, right? While we eat, Lady Greenridge is like looking at both of you talking with quite a lot of interest. I mean, you did immediately eat the beans after I asked you not to. They were my beans. 
I didn't see your flag on those beans. She stands up and punches the table. That's still not a flag, you just punched the table. And then she reaches forward, picks picks up the jug, begins drinking again. Ladies, ladies, as you know, it is very important that these negotiations, that things go harmoniously. Let us put our best foot forward and reset this. Hello, my name is Maisie. Hello. I'm a history student. You're a history this student? Yes. What do you know about Volfield? Uh, what does she know about Volfield? You can roll history check. Characters, <laughs> Maisie, all of a sudden rolling. Sure, actually, history, maybe, you mean. All right, yeah, so a small province from Nordrak. And however, as you just are sitting there taking your next sip of your drink, you remember there was an Iliana from Volfield that sailed west and attacked Rhineland, conquered the area. And was a big warlord, a very big warlord. Even became uh, king, queen of Ragnarok for some months. Oh, I think I read about you once. Oh, yes. Are you like Iliana? Uh, no. Yes, no. So someone took my face and you know, turned into a dragon and stuff. But then Dolaf brought my corpse to a set of standing stones and resurrected me. Oh. Um. This is terribly exciting. Does that mean I that the man had sex with a corpse? Sorry? That's a good question. That was what I was thinking about. Thank you for asking that, Macy. Right. Well, probably don't say that loud. That cry's probably enough for both of us. Did he, did he have sex with you before or after reviving the corpse? Hey. Before, but I was alive then. <laughs> okay, now that, that... Okay, thank you that for, for yeah, elaborating. If he did before, she wouldn't know. Oh, there was a big hoo-ha with a giant snake mouth. And most of my friends died there. Oh, you uh, know. I'm trying to establish a timeline. Was the snake involved in the sex escape? Paid, or was that also before? Uh, that was definitely before. Okay. I'm starting to realise why they left us in the crash. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did he need to revive you at the Sunday Stones? Oh, I don't know. It was something to do with the fact that I was corrupted by the void. Ah, right, okay. Is that why you're a bit... <whistles> I'm a bit what? what what's, what's that? A bird? A whistle? A, a finger? A Nuts? No, I do not like nuts. Out of like us, the voice. So did you do that? Is is that on you? No, not, <laughs> yeah, you hear the voice in the background. Not me. She's nuts. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. I really hate being embarrassed by the people that I travel with. Oh uh, no! <laughs> Trust me, I'm always embarrassed by Dolaf. You know, one minute he's nice, next minute he's killing servants willy nilly. It's embarrassing. At least do it in their sleep. So no one sees. Mm. Is it true it has a golden bow? Mm, it's more yellow. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of a lot of uh, metalworks have that problem. You make them gold, and they come out more yellowish, and then they yellow more over time. But you know but, what's uh, more peculiar? And I've always wondered why. But he wears a severed hand around his neck. And you know yeah, what? He... Between me and you, he has a penchant for blood. Did he also get corrupted by the void, or was he hoo-hoo before? Oh, I don't know about that, but I don't know. At some point around the time that he met that filthy dwarf, that he started drinking blood. I remember, we used to see him out the front of the fortress, you know, uh, finding rats and drinking them. Dwarfs, yeah. scourges of the earth. I've said it before. So he's got a pension for blood now. Oh, I don't know. I could be lying. And she winks at you. Like, like drinking blood or just spilling blood? Oh, I don't know. What's in his wine glass? Is that red wine or is it blood? Who knows? And you see I mean, Lady Greenridge look down at her goblet. I was about to tell Luke at Greenridge, you'd think a dragon would be able to sniff that out. <laughs> Lady Greenridge saying nothing. Out of like shoves her wine glass a bit further away. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is anything anyone else like to ask of Lady Greenridge or ask of Iliana before we move over? Uh, so Lady Greenridge, um, dragon and all, uh, is the stereotype about uh, all the riches and the gold correct? Are you loaded? I'm loaded, yes. Okay, my commission list is free currently. Um, and <laughs> I I have this giant stone out of the Feywild in my hands. Uh, because uh, Macra can't wait for someone to craft an armor set, apparently, before he runs off and buys it elsewhere. Um, any new Come scepter off. you need, any new jewels, you have just become a queen. She smiles, and with a flash of green energy, a very beautiful staff appears. A short one, maybe let's just say a rod, about four foot, gnarled and twisted like an old oak branch. I have this one. It's fine. I can I can do better. Yeah. Which is um which is weird because going out of the game here. When you guys went to your first ever yeah, I know. Model she stole it from us. Yeah, yeah. I'm aware. Yeah. So um when did she, when did she steal it from? She got there but first. And then left the In the monolith, in the literally first monolith we went to, Curtis, uh, yeah, at the yeah, start yeah. of the game. Uh-huh. It's asking a lot of you. Like you usually forget the last session we played. And <laughs> like, awesome, big. That's a, that's a large timestamp for stuff that Macro definitely wouldn't care about. Therefore, Kurt doesn't care about. So, um, anything else you guys wanted to ask? No, we're good. Right, cool. Right. So, moving over to the wagon as Dolaf enters, there's that immediate sense of palpable tension. He looks around. His silver hair is kind of comb straight like i said he wears his regal robes and he just stares across the room before nadina issues towards the spare cushion and he does walk towards it glances around the room and then sits down onto his knees and looks around and he looks towards orwin and your eyes meet orwin and then he nods it's a shame that you wouldn't have become the Avatar. You would have made a fine host. Just doesn't really seem uh, fitting for the world. He nods, silent, and then he looks straight into the eyes of you, Lanieros. There's nothing. It says nothing. He just stares at you, at you and Nadina kind of. <clears throat> coughs into a hand and he he kind of like twists his neck rather than and then turns into the turn as he looks at her kind of like a way that a snake would turn its head and then peers towards Nadina and you see he's got this look in his eyes that are almost kind of like milky white then switch to kind of like a pale yellow and his cheeks are kind of gaunt and you can see the elvish bones uh, structure in his face as he as the shadows and the light falls upon it and the shadows fill in those hollows and he bows ever so slightly with a grin on his face towards Nadina, who says, Welcome, uh, Lord Erinspire. King Erinspire. Yes, um, you sent me the letter detailing what you would offer me. I've invited you here to talk it out with my acquaintances here. They say that we shouldn't side with you. And that I shouldn't come over to you, me and my men and my army. That the broken empire should stay clear of you. I ask you now, what are your goals? I, I, you say you can give me back my father and my brother? How? Dolaf nods, smile fading. In this world, there are shapers, there are dreamers. I hope you don't mind me saying, Lady Grey Warden, that you are a dreamer. Me? I used to be a shaper. But I want to be a dreamer. Turns towards Orwin. Jabs a thumb. And these folk are shapers. I will give everyone the dream they deserve. 
to everyone and anyone. They'll live in perpetual peace. And I'll go with them. I've been there before. My wife, my children. And he closes his eyes, takes a deep breath. I can still smell the air there. Sweet. I was happy. It's the last memory of happiness I have. And I want to share that with the world. And when he arrives, we will be able to. All those forsaken, all those in the shadows will don their masks. They will rise from the yellow sun. And they will take their place in the great dream. And his hands fall to his knees. And those who say otherwise will die. I've amassed a great army. Not many have resisted. And the dealer says, but I hear that Lord Ant, and he says, don't mention that name to me now. Puts his hands down. The room goes silent. Oh, Both faces just zoom says was all in. <laughs> That's all. What more do you want to know? And I'll just like shrug and I'll uh, address Nadina again and say, "Look, I'm sure if you ask him what his history is, it'll be very similar to yours. It's going to be a very sad story, and I do feel sorry for him, but." This is what happens when a mind is broken, when it is weak. And it can no longer bend to accommodate the events of one's life. But one's no longer willing to accept reality. One sees no further value in the truth. One sees no further value in reality. And just dreams of something else. We can make something else happen. We can choose our own destinies to an extent, but if we give in to such weakness, and do not mistake it for what it is, it is a weakness, it is an inability to deal with reality as it is, it is a decision that enough is enough and I can't deal with this anymore and I'll try and make it all go away. But it will never go away, it will always have been and it will always be what it was. And we can choose to either accept that and make of it what we can, knowing that we've done our best to perhaps make life better for ourselves and for others, or we can choose to pull the wool over one's eyes and just go back to sleep and pretend that everything is okay. It may be pleasant, it may be easy, but it will never be real, it will never be true, and, well, Perhaps you won't have to live with it, but the world will. This is not the way. <laughs> Don't laugh. Not. And you see he's grinding his teeth together. Reality is a harsh despondency. Often disappointment. It's pain, suffering, it's torture. Why should we live here in our flesh? The blood coursing through our veins, feeling all manner of sadness. When we could ascend to something better, when we could become better, and we can live in a harmonious realm where nothing can touch you, nothing can hurt you, no wife can leave you, no children die. You speak of harmony, yet you wish to subject your will onto. Everyone who is not willing to participate in your event, how is that harmony? You're just a tyrant in disguise, offering utopia, as they always do. Harmony oft comes after conquest. And not long after, you have you've realized this harmony was fake and rise up against it. History repeats itself, and it's you no different. have to crush a few skulls to save the rest from the noose. Do you hear 
the bitterness to hear the anger in this man. I would not trust him with my life. And definitely not with my soul. Uh, Nadina feels... Com- I don't know why I all enrolled. Me. <laughs> yeah, no. She, she seems confused. She seems... T- um, unsure of both of you. And then she looks straight into the eyes of someone more her age. Someone more akin to probably her... Her point of view and... What about you? Uh, Owen? Oh. oh my, um... Well... Never really was one great for being diplomatic about things, so... You know, what I can see is you come from a great family, right? You, uh... Your father was a great man. Your, uh... Your husband? They were powerful, right? I'm sorry for your loss, but they were good men. My father and brother. Brother, sorry. Um, my apologies. Not married. Sorry? I am not married. She blushes. Right. <laughs> my mistake. As Motherfucker, I get nervous in these what situations. You about a dead <laughs> fucking dying brother. Back. She's making moves. The damn oh, high source for charisma stat. <laughs> Fucking Grey Warden down bad bitch. Come on, it's more like a kind of like an older like crush. She's remember she's one year away from legal marriage age as far as Mokul's concerned. So what I'm basically saying is do you want to be a strong person like your father and your brother? Or do you want to bow down to the world and be a bitch like him? Oh my god, roll a persuasion check for that <laughs> fucking... <laughs> oh my god, you're lucky he's not allowed uh... weapons in this place. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know it's risky, but he's not a diplomat, so... <laughs> oh my um... god, <laughs> holy shit! Ma- oh my max god. inspirations, that mean I get advantage on the first roll. Yeah! Oh, no. Good shit. <laughs> you have just sealed the nice. deal. That is so good. He had no respect. Right, so. Well, you both succeeded in what you wanted. Okay, so. The, mo- <laughs> the moment you begin speaking like that, and you say that, Nadina giggles slightly at the fact that you called fucking Dolaf a bitch. And. <laughs> Fucking believe it. That was nowhere that was. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I I don't think me and my men will be joining you. And then she turns from Orwin's face to to Dolaf. I don't think your direction is the right one for me or for the world. I will turn my army around, and I will be heading back to Ket, post haste. Though Laugh says, no you won't. And you see his fists clenched. You won't. He stands, and he looks towards you, Orwin, points a finger at you, and just says, I will be looking for you on the battlefield. Turns and with a sweep of his robes, exits through the gossamer curtain, and you hear a door slamming. Lindiris, I think I made a mistake. No, that was appropriate. Oh, I really hope so, because uh, he looks really intense. One can tell how weak one is of character if one is so easily offended. Nadina looks at you both. Well, this doesn't... Still no alliance, you know. I... My army still owe allegiance to another. To Hakar, the God King's son. I... You must know that if you require my aid in defending Mokul, 
I will first have to discuss this with the Blood Emperor. I would invite you to think about what you've just witnessed and think if you want one who's so bent on making other people obey his wishes if that can ever be something good for this world. I understand allegiances are tricky and sometimes you might feel like you need this permission or discussion prior to making a choice yourself, but if you believe in the fact that one should be able to make their own choices, if one should be free to go and do as you please, have your own opinions, then we need to defend this world against what is coming. It is not about cities, it is not about kingdoms. It is about a choice between the freedom to choose your own way or being subjected to the will of this tyrant. I do have a proposal that will guarantee my allegiance right now, this day. Very well. Speak your mind. I want Makarov's head. And I don't mean here, I want it severed. I want him dead. What will this get you, if I may ask? Semblance of revenge. Assassins have failed to kill Grildar multiple times. And Makral is never in one spot long enough. He's here though, right? He is. I must tell you that I've seen revenge being taken in such a way. Ah! Just one finger up. This is the first time you've seen her commanding. I don't want to hear it. Just like Issa, who is friends with Grildar. She has tried to convince me of another way many, many times. It's not my immaturity that rules me here. It's my steely virtue. They killed my family. I understand. Perhaps it would be better to uh, maybe end on a, on a note of harmony that we set out for you... You've decided not to side with Dorleth. That's great. Maybe we shouldn't get into the discussion about Macra right now. Oh, I have no intention to discuss that further. I just want to leave you with one thought. You currently have this hunger for vengeance driving you. I've seen this many times before, and I've also seen how it ends. And you don't need to believe me. You don't need to act on what I'm saying. I just want to give you some advice that you can do with as you please. Once you enact your vengeance, once you have what you think is what you want, you'll feel emptier than you do now. You'll feel no satisfaction. You will not feel better about your life. You will simply have lost your drive. Now, while you still have some drive in you, I would recommend you find something else that motivates you and chase that instead. Make of that what you will. Can I wink her at that point? For fuck's sake, Oh, Owen. Okay, yeah. Uh, she seems more d uh, distracted for a second, and then she turns back to you, Lanieros. I've heard your fairy tale notions. I've listened. Perhaps you are right. Perhaps you're not. I will send a messenger to Hakart. Detailing the fact that I wish to defend my ancestral home from its invaders. Well, will you stick with me the next day or so? Or will you leave straight away? Do you have a preference in the matter? Well, Hakat will not reply tonight. What I'm saying is I will have to wait till tomorrow. Oh yes, well, if it's about relaying messages, we don't need to be here physically for that. We can find some other way to do that. We have 
many things to do, but I do not wish to offend you in any way. So if I can have your assurance of safety while we stay with you, then I'm happy to stay. She nods. While you're in the camp, you have my assurance of safety. Even Macra. I appreciate that. Just please Even do if... not let him north of the line. I'll relay this message to him. And you have once my again, thanks. I appreciate your hospitality. Stay wherever you want. The south of the line is probably best. If you don't mind, we'll be back in a while. I wish to go and see if they are indeed safe and um, tell them of our plan of action that we will stay here for the night. Mm -hmm. I will instruct them of the rules of the camp, and if they break those, then that will be at their own risk. He nods. Isa! Oh, he looks down at you. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, like, uh, if they do break the rules, then please don't let it reflect on us, because they are very much their own people. <laughs> yeah, she calls Issa, and Issa nods at you and says, come, I will show you to uh, where you will stay. And she leads you out into the camp again and takes you south towards Lady Groomridge's tent, which is quite a marvellous affair, purple and black, all kind of flowing, kind of blood-red flags of the uh, the Broken Empire. And as you're shown in, Macra, Elsa for Maisie. I just wanted to make sure that we get this in. As we're leaving, I've got to give her the look back as well. <laughs> okay. You've you've given her that childhood crush that she probably won't forget. Don't give her that mild pout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give her the backstreet boy hair flick as well. Oh no. Yeah, and uh so Don't all of you are now <laughs> all of you are now together. And Lady Greenridge uh has uh well just pr prior to this, Ileana seemed distracted, got up and left, saying goodbye. Um and Lady Greenridge just sits languish like languidly in her chair, lazily. And you're all now together. Oh, hello. Oh, so we found out that Dolaf may or may not have fucked a snake at some point, uh, and a corpse. <laughs> we are unclear <laughs> of the correct timeline here. And honestly, this has been the topic of conversation for the last two hours. Yeah, Makra and I can't decide whether or not the snake was actively involved or if it was just around. No, 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 no. Elsa, Makra hasn't replied to you for quite some time now. Why, well, obviously, the conversation would get much worse if he was involved. I've got to sleep in the corner. <laughs> yeah. And Elsa um, has drawn up a timeline on like a napkin. And mm -hmm. there's different spots where the snake may or may not have come in. <laughs> What do you reckon? Yeah. Uh, what, what's the name of this? Oh, hold on. I'll also, all the food on the table has slowly been pulled over closer to Elsa as, as that evening has progressed. She's just hoarding stuff. Yeah, annoyingly, Lanieros and Owen, as you walk in, most of the food is kind of eaten or just non existent since you turned up late. But there's drink aplenty. Hmm. Would you say it's a bit of a waste of wish to cast Bonify Memory on myself to forget about that conversation? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, so do, do, do we have to kill that last Grave Warden child so you, the entire family's murdered, or did you go, get on well? The, the Lady Greenridge scoffs by wine in her mouth. <laughs> did you just discuss murdering my ward right in front of me? Well, I assume Lanieros got through to her well. He's a diplomat, so we're not actually gonna do it. You know, Elf, that I would crush you if you did. Well, now I know that you would. So we'll obviously take that into account as we discuss the murder. Uh, oh, please, Lady Greenwich, no, we'll allow me to uh, take over for a moment and discuss what's been happening. We had a discussion... Uh, Dolath showed up in the middle of it, and 
Well, uh, yes, Macro, that face is appropriate, indeed. Um, especially when we get to the next part, which, uh, well, you should just wait and see. Um, basically, he was trying to convince her to live in this Yellow King's utopia where everything is beautiful and everything is perfect and everything is fake as can be. He, of course, wishes to, to submit everyone to his will in order to subject to this idea of the world that he has in his mind and wishes to crush everyone that stands in his way, as tyrants usually do. We, uh... Well... Alwyn here, uh... had his first experience insulting a king. Well done. I'm still not sure that was a grand move, to be honest. That, that's my boy. That's what I and good job! I do believe, uh, what, what is the term you called him? <laughs> I'll just look at Owen like a bit teasingly. Oh god, I called him a bitch. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, I just so can't think of anything else, you know, like... I felt quite angry about it. I don't know why I went for Indian there. So, <laughs> so he could be the bitch. I thought the snake might be the bitch. This changes everything. Um, well, there was some discussions of allegiance, and, uh, well, the Grave Warden basically um, asked for your presence, Makra, except that it was the presence of your head on a plate served to her. Well, we've had a good run, Makra. Uh, thank you for, for, for the time. Um... We politely declined the offer, and... Uh, us that under the banner of hospitality you will not be harmed while in camp. As long as you stay south of the line and do not break any of the rules of the camp, you should be safe here. Uh, what would we have gotten from Macro's head? No. I, I, I just want to know the terms when I wasn't allowed to be here. Macro, you want to know, right, what your head is worth? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious, yeah. See, Macro wants to know. I can't blame her really, are the ones who me on a plate. I do look delicious. <laughs> Sips wine. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Don't suppose there's any more of that before he drinks it all, is there? I feel like I could use a glass at least. Yeah, there's plenty. Please could someone help me? I've been sat here at this table trying to work this out for the last fifteen minutes. What on earth is their end game here? Who's this Yellow King, this army that's been assembled by some kind of proxy kingling, exactly what is it they're trying to achieve? World utopian, harmonized, euphoric peace under some kind of blanket of illusionary control. That is the image they are trying to create. I'm sure there's more to well, than that. And why are we worried? Surely they, they've learned the lessons of history, right? Surely they understand that they are outnumbered and doomed to fail regardless. Whether they win today and lose tomorrow, or whether they lose today, is certain. Yes, wise words, but I fear that generally people in history are doomed to repeat the mistakes, even the ones that they know about. Right. Well, I was worried until you stepped into this tent, and now I feel sorry for them. Can we go back to whether or not we're giving them Macross head? It, the, the point is it won't matter. They can have it or not have the head. Ultimately, the head won't be consequential in this. Okay, so you think as well that we should consider what they're giving us for the head and then make a decision as a group? No, I just feel more comfortable talking about it now that Macross passed out. Well, no, yeah. I think I'm just gonna go leave the tent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll see if Lady Greenwood wants to, uh, to be fair. have any further conversation otherwise. No, no. Lady Greenwood goes, Maisie brought up a good point, you know. The, what, like, their end game is as confusing to you as it is to me, and I probably know more by the sounds of it. Exactly. And if you may, Mrs. Greenwood, you strike me as someone who is uh, quite influential in this part of the world, would I be correct? It's been four years, but I have made quite a lot of contacts. Some would say she brushes a speck of food off of her shoulder. 
I'm an empress now. Excellent. And they're going to need your empire, right, to wage their silly little war, as they always do, because campaigns like this last on two things. Well-supplied army and a very quick strike. And then the conquest bogs down and they realize there's money involved and there's other things that they have to make sure that they make bridges with. And all of a sudden, they're knee-deep in promises they can't keep and people start to fall away from their little plan. And then they found themselves overwhelmed on the back foot and their lines shrink backwards and they find themselves in a kingdom the size of a pea and then they're shoved back into the space and what they got to say for it? A yellow star and a pissed off guy with a yellow arrow. Who the hell pulled your bitch switch today? What the hell? What's up with, what's up with Macy? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, just infuriate for once. When people do not learn the lessons of history, it is utterly ridiculous. Go on his history Linares. degree and goes off, jeez. Linares, I must say, if we were to put up a marginal defence now at our own comfort and to ensure our own lives have any kind of worth and meaning, we won't have any difficulty. We'll go around, we'll let people know exactly what the plan is, and all of a sudden we'll have some kind of militia. Uh, we'll outnumber theirs, at least three to one. It's basic maths. Um, Lady Grimage puts up a hand. His army is a hundred thousand strong. This side, Lord knows how many he has still on the Armada. I... And how many of those will fight when they know that their end game is actually something less desirable than the state they currently exist in? These men want to fight. These men want to drink and whore and plunder and get rich for a few years, and then I guarantee you, Miss Greenridge, they will get bored. And when that happens, the army will dissolve like a piece of bread in a pond. The real question here... And oh, I wish to bring him back as much as you. I hate and I loathe to admit it. I you know I'm on your side, we're on each other's sides, even if we don't like one another. Getting him out of Mokul is my number one priority. But think about it. I have no idea or no clue why he's here in Phoebo, or why his army is moving to the Yellow Sea. A desert with no supplies. I have no clue. I'm half tempted just to let him, so that his army perishes beneath the sun. But he must be going there for a reason, and we're here to try to find out why. Wasn't there a... No, look at... Maisie will look at Linearos and Alwyn and everyone else as if with a raised eyebrow, like, are we saying something? Are we not saying something? What's the deal? Well, do I, I do have a theory. I do have a theory about the whole Yellow Sea thing, but, uh, I mean, Gre Lady Greenrich seems alright. I have, I, have no, I have no problems with her. Thank you. <laughs> this is so good! <laughs> <laughs> she lived on the good part of town. I have... Everything was fine when she was still there. No, no Gnolls living there, for one thing. I must admit, the only thing I knew is she was not either. So, um, the only thing bad thing I know in the Yellow Sea is uh, in the in the you know tomb of Mistra, uh, the avatar of Mistra. So, if their goal is to break her out and you know uh, threaten the weave so that the God Comet thing can come down and uh, be unchallenged, uh, that would be my first theory. Other than that, I don't know anything the Yellow Sea. It's a piss uh, group of Sam. Mm, um, yeah, so my bread in the pond theory doesn't work so well when the bread's wrapped in uh, some form of apotheotic mayonnaise that keeps it from falling apart. Does that make sense? Mm. Very little, but surprisingly enough. Right, so... Do we, we... I mean, we had allies near Thebo, right? Chester was supposed to be there? As much as a little prick he is? Perhaps. Hmm. And wasn't that where Gwen... <laughs> our other allies were? <laughs> well, I believe I'll retire for the night. 
After you've moved your phone from your microphone. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I think, think that's actually Todd this time. I don't know. No, it it's... seems to be him lighting up. It could be, but my phone's quite far away. I think it's when it goes off on Arnie's side. It like goes off on through his. It's in like it only goes off when Arnie talks as well. Weird. I'll mute Sorry. it. Mm. No, it's not. It's not you. I don't think it's you, Todd. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me to unmute. You... <laughs> yeah. So, are you retiring for the uh, evening, everyone? Yeah. yeah. On the way out of the tent, Maisie just points at LZ's napkin. I think you missed key date there. Oh, also. No, well, I think the snake fucking was um, circa this year rather than later. I think she had the affair with the mongoose after that. <laughs> well, she, I, I was going by information she provided, but she did look like she would fuck a mongoose. So. Oh, well, yeah. She looked like she was part mongoose even with how she acted. And then I'll retire. Alright, cool. Alright, so most of you, I'm assuming, then retire for the evening. Uh, gaining the benefits of a long rest. Long resto! Long resto, son! However... I don't think I needed one. Oh, I, I was low on hit die. Okay, yeah. and that brings me one day closer to the fucking Death Shadow working again. Okay, okay. Early hours of the morning, wherever you are in the camp, all of you wake up wearily, especially the Neros, who's probably in a trance rather than asleep. You'll hear it. It's distant. And then it spreads down the line. It's a horn being blown. And then there's shouting, then there's screams, and then people are rushing around. You hear male armor being put on, weapons clinking. Thank you. And you hear men shouting outside to get ready to prepare. You hear, don your shield. <laughs> that. <laughs> Fuck me, you came out of nowhere with that. You hear it's it. All right. That's alright. Up and down the lines. Men moving, rushing, trying to get ready. Uh, rush and get ready. <laughs> yeah, so you stand up, like, disheveled, like, you know, bed hair uh, to the side. You get up and you find yourself asleep on a bed inside uh, Lady Greenridge's tent. Luscious, like, perfect tent. Uh, bed, sorry. And as you get out and you're, oh, Wipe the sleep from your eyes. Lanieros, you're wide awake, obviously, having only had four hours of a trance, basically. And as the rest of you wake, you there's just chaos outside. There's just people running to and fro, horses whinnying, being pulled to the, up the line, and uh, soldiers running back and forward, and all kinds of chaos. Ladies, I've like, also had a trance, uh, so she's just having oh, breakfast. Yeah. yeah. So, and what was that, Maisie? It's just amazing once past everyone's room, banging the pot, shouting, The Red Coming! Uh, um, so we we leaving? Hmm. <clears throat> now it's just sighs and looks at the others. Fuck oh, knows. Ah, uh, well, well... Let's get to a command tent first. Has anyone seen Lady Greenridge? She's nowhere to be found. Uh, no, I'm going to ask around to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, one, one, one guy that you ask stops. He's a soldier, and he's like, he's got the sergeant stripes, the blood red stripes of the sergeant, and he just looks around and he says, "says Lady Greenridge, who gives a fuck about Lady Greenridge? Who are you?" And Where if you're in commanding officer, oh, what he points up towards the tent? There. Okay. And then looks and at you walk, walk, walk off in that direction. And then he sees Macro walk past, he looks up. And then his eyes squint, he knows who that is. And as you walk up to the tent, Issa steps out and she's back, like, screaming orders at people. And you see her hair's been tied up into a thick plait, not the two kind of layer plaits she had before. And it's tied up into a big kind of knot. And she's got her armor on and her bow strung and the two swords in her hand. And she looks at you both. And you see there's like sweat on her brow. And she sees you all. Yes. You might want to get out of here. You might want to get out of here. 
What is going on? Oh, is oh, it Dorath attacking? I don't know, but I believe so. Hmm. He, he, she points up the hill, and she said, beyond that hill there, there is a big army lining up. Not far. I don't know how he snuck up on me. My scouts were everywhere. Magic, probably. Not just really bad scouts. Love that. Um, I don't want to play politics right now, but if we help these not to get completely smashed by Dolaf, might look quite well for us. Might not want my head in exchange for friendship afterwards. Oh, was that what the head was for? Yes. Oh, that's a bad deal. We shouldn't have taken that. Agreed. Are you going or are you staying? <sighs> oh, like... Try and survey the situation of whether this command tent is safe for now. Yeah, uh, okay, so make a perception check. Okay, so the first thing you notice is that you the line of the camp is in a gully. It's at the bottom of a hill. If a cavalry charge came down here, goodbye army. Instant. Um, and you can see she's already... It, like up to that she's moving her men back up and you can see they're transporting supplies horses weapons and men back up the other side of the galley which is slower than the other side mm -hmm. but it's a safer position she if she was to go up the other side you see that she's got this right that if an, a cavalry charge or an army was coming that way and she wasn't able to form the line up there quick enough she'd put herself at more disadvantage at least if she goes the other way she's got more time Okay. Um, hmm. Macra, I need you to make a wisdom save. <laughs> I think if they were uh, coming down that side and it's so steep, they're going to struggle for any cavalry. Is this just because they've got horses? Nope. Right, so you, you, you your hand like begins to shake slightly at the, at the memories and the thought of an incoming battle, but you grab hold of your wrist, stop the shaking, take a deep breath. I guess this is the first full-scale battle we've been in this campaign. It depends. Well, that was the Battle of the Bloody Oranges, which I would count People as last. Skirmish that was, rather than a full-scale battle. There was no cavalry charge, which I think is like the main thing, right? That's probably <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, Issa says, you can stay and fight, that is your prerogative. But, um... I really must be getting on. Oh, let's stay and fight, please, Lineros. Please, let me stay and fight. They're pussy hoes. Lanieros, before you consider this, Atlantia is really nice this time of the year. <laughs> I'll consider that. Uh, do as you wish, but I've always been... It being that one who initiates aggression should be dealt with swiftly. Yes, good, excellent. Let's let them suck our lady dicks. Well, I didn't bring anything to get out of this place by myself, so I'll stick around. Um, is the is the guy that's just been talked to has fucked off and started commanding troops now? Is it just us? She around? is yeah, fucked off and began commanding yeah, troops. Good. Right. Um, maybe not necessarily getting the thick of it, but let's go find Grey Warden, hang out within proximity of it. If the battle starts winning, obviously we can then join in and help them win faster. It starts losing, but they've still got a chance of winning. Then we can jump in and help. If they're losing and they're inevitably getting crushed, we might be quite helpful at protecting Grey Warden and Green Ridge. Green Ridge doesn't need protecting. She'll fly off. She's a fucking dragon. But Green Ridge will be will be probably be quite helpful at protecting her until we can make an escape using. This is very unlike you, Macra, and I don't like it. What we if we fight? And if it looks like we are losing, teleport. Yeah, as I was thinking teleport, but being close to Green, uh, being close to Grey Warden might be quite a smart idea. Yeah, but if the army dies, what do we need <sighs> her for? <sighs> She's got political. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. Maybe you don't have that much political arms. power with a dead army. <sighs> I'll just start I'm just going to tear find... open the weave in the background while they have a discussion. <laughs> 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 You're casting wish. Is this the greatest yeah. simulacrum? It is. 
Yeah. Look at me, I'm Aqua. I want the one political ally that ally that wants me dead and doesn't have an army. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. So are we fighting? Is that the general consensus? I think yeah. Lanieros wants to fight and he's sort of my uh, uh, driver, so... Then let's fucking go! <laughs> I'll see you down the front when you're ready. Maisie, uh, Maisie turns into a gold dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I wish. <laughs> Amazing you turned yourself into a gold dragon. There's just oh, this. Like, as the as you all feel, those of you who can cast magic, which is all of you actually, you feel that, like, pull from all, all and creating wish. Then it literally snaps back like a bro broken rubber band. And next to you, there's an explosion of magical energy. All of you are kind of like stumble and flounder away and a gold dragon roars and just soars up into the air and as you soar up into the air your wings unfurling Maisie and you your new draconic perception gazes across the line in the distance you see matchstick figures uh, and you go oh and you realize despite that that this army in front of you is maybe eight to ten times bigger than the current one in the gully oh that sucks <laughs> you're not gonna oh. take us with you <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for uh, Golden Dragon Mazes to get one shot by a fucking Dolos Golden Bow. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. It's an immediate shot to the heart. <laughs> Goddamn sorceress born with magic powers, sodding show offs. If Owen does say that, she will come back down. He does indeed say that. Then she will come back down. Uh, bearing in mind, the adult Gold Dragon has a shapeshift form, so you can just take a humanoid form back as you usually were. Oh, delightful. I'm about to share the token with you so you can read it and everything. Cheers, sir. She won't know. She'll literally crash into the ground. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, this is causing chaos. Some soldiers are beginning to don weapons and, and move forward. Yeah, Orwin and Simulacrum will jump on the back. Nice. You should be able to see it now, Todd. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Elsif is going around trying to buy a war horse from anyone who doesn't want theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, can you roll me a persuasion check? Alright, so it's not very persuasive, but she's willing to pay 200. Um, how, much, how much is a war horse? More than 200. Is it? How expensive was a war horse? I've got 250 in my brain, but I have no idea if that's relevant to this edition. Uh, Elsa was willing to pay 400 for the war horse. Alright, roll a persuasion check. Alright, so you um, run around and one soldier that, uh, does seem interested for like uh, 30 seconds, and then Issa goes... Of course, 400 gold. Yeah, w um, for a second, like as if he he weighs up whether to take the money and run. And then um, Issa behind goes, What are you doing distracting my soldiers? Get uh, away! And he kind of goes, Sorry, rides off. My bad, I wanted to buy a war horse to escape by myself if shit got serious. But, uh... You ruined that chance, thank you. She shakes oh, her head. You could have bought an elephant for half the price. Oh, do you have any elephants? No, I do <laughs> not have any elephants! <laughs> uh, that's your fault, war elephants, that's where it's at. I'd love some Nerean war elephants, but it is not that simple. Uh, no, you should have thought of that ahead of time, really. Her eyes are gone wide. You can take a pony, who cares? Get out of my way! That's beneath me, that's for dwarfs and halflings. <laughs> <laughs> and Elsa checks if anyone still has, like, breakfast on the table that they didn't finish. Yeah, they do. Oh. Alright, so... Uh, so... You got Maisie in her gold dragon form flying up and floating up ahead with both all winds on her back. What about everyone else? One sec. Alright. Well, how about as you're all deciding what you're gonna do, we'll take a quick five to ten minute break, and then we'll come back and start this. Good plan.
Okay, so the group has prepared, and after maybe quarter of an hour, the army of Nadina Greybordon, despite her not being around or in visible sight, has lined up on the opposite end of the gully, um, maybe about 100 feet back from the lip. You can see that she has a good a good 10,000 men, um, and most camp followers are what look like some sort of mili militia that are using bows and arrows from behind. And you see it's all lined up in a kind of like a snake-like motion as Issa runs up and down on a horse yelling orders left, right, centre. Um, what and where would you guys be positioned on this gully? Picture a kind of verdant, almost Greek hilly landscape. You're in the Vobia, the Feboan lands, aren't you? So you've got this kind of like waving long grass. And in the distance, you can see the dirt and dust being kicked up by the army, maybe a mile away at this point. Could you, on the world map, draw just like an outline of what it would look like, either from the top or... I knew someone would ask this. I like <laughs> said, theatre of mind. To, yeah, the, this is theatre of mind. You can use like basic scribbles with theatre of the mind to just help me. Give me a second. Uh, Elsa has brought herself a chair and had the construct carry a table mm -hmm. to like a little slope and just sat down there, protected by the construct with two cans ready to fire on whoever approaches. See, now it's annoying because we've all rolled initiative and I want to move you to a different map so I can draw this. <laughs> right, I know what my initiative is. So, like. Can you I don't understand what you're asking. So, you want like a side view image of this gully or. Uh, Side view or top view, wherever is easier for you to draw. Like I said, it's like... I'll do, I'll do it for you. Oh, that's a square. How do you draw a fucking freehand? That, that's a gully. So, right, okay, that works. So, oh, that's the wrong go. way around. <laughs> we're, on the, we're on the smaller gradient than yeah, that. Yeah, you're over here. Yeah. Theatre of the mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Why is it drawn a circle? Right, so where would everyone be in this line or whereabouts? So Elzef is fine. She's basically doing what that kid does in that Star Wars fight with Mace Windu, just watching from a nearby. I She's like a distance where her cans can fire and she can cast a spell if she feels like it, but she can skedaddle if she looks bad. Yeah, yeah. Sounds yeah, and good. so the armies are converging at the bottom of the gully, right? No. No, 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 no. no. They've, you've moved out of the bottom of the gully to the other side, yeah. and they're coming from the other side, about a mile away at this, at this point. Oh, uh, so the gully's behind us, not where the army no, is. No, in front. No one's in the gully. We've all left the gully, and we've positioned ourselves at the edge of the gully, and the army, yeah. other army's also not in the gully, and approaching from one of the other sides. Okay, that's what I mean. So we're, we're not... Dolaf's army, coming this way. Mm -hmm. All of you lined up over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going around the gully, so we can see them approach. But no one's going through the gully. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, the gully is yeah. pointless. Mm. No, the goal is not pointless because oh shit, how have I done that? Uh, the goal is not pointless because. Um, they're going to have to climb up a gully to get to us now. No, they're they? going around, right? They're going around, Curtis. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, this is the shit that, that was oh, yeah. three sentences ago. Whoa, what is that? This is me, the server lagging out as I was trying to draw, and it just kept drawing. <laughs> I don't want to look anymore. <laughs> well, that, that's um, fine. So I just need to know where you guys would be. Oh, it's okay. Um, um, well, it doesn't really matter too much. We'll just be uh, like near the... I don't want to be near any command tents of purple because those are easy targets for a nice meteor swarm or something. To hit. <laughs> yeah, so okay. uh, I prefer not to have those uh, near us. And um, let me just have a look. Right, so let's say this is the goal here. Why is it so hard to draw on Foundry? And that, so their, their army's over here. How do I change color? You need to change your own color because you're always drawing in your color for clarity. Oh, now I figured out what's that. Got it. Yeah, so they they need to go like this, right? That's what they're doing. And so yeah, they're just going around the goal, and we're over here in the in the yellow, and they're just mm. oh no, I didn't. That should change to yellow, but there you go. Yeah, yeah. So 
and the the army is lined up ready to withstand a significant push. Mm -hmm. Question. Yes. Does it look like Dolas full force, or is it just a skirmish? Uh, that looks or... like a good uh, a good question. That is a good question. You can make a perception <coughs> check from here. I would like to do the same. So I can't assist with his eyes, but I can also try and see. see. All right. So both of you feel like that looks like a good amount of people. That looks like a full force. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if he's got an, an entire army that's eight times the size of ours, is he sending the full army then, do you reckon? It looks or... it looks like at the front, it looks like there is good couple of thousand of uh cavalry up ahead. See that's uh, the force of a man who has been called a bitch by a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to be in position at least so that far enough back so that I'll be <clears throat> within range to cast uh, like a mile long distance spell mm -hmm. behind the first clash. Yep. So you want to be quite far back? Well, yeah, like <clears throat> uh, depends on how far Adina's force are planning to move towards because usually you don't stay where you are, right? Because that's yeah. foolish. Mm hmm. Uh, so you start moving towards the enemy as they approach to have some choice of where the battle will take place. Mm -hmm. But so I don't want to be like two miles back. I yeah. don't want to be in the front of the battle, but somewhere yeah. in between. That's fine. Back. Distance is kind of not void. Like, we're going exalted kind of fear in mind here. You just tell me that you're yeah. rallying in the battle, you're doing it. So yeah. remember yeah. that. Alright, so Lanius, at the beginning of combat, you begin um, preparing and you're calm. I mean, you're from the Fey world, right? Chaos is your thing. You know that you'll be able to deal with what comes. So you begin preparing. And Orwin, on the back of um, Maisie, uh, Maisie and Orwin, how far up are you? What Whereabouts are you? What's your plan? You can see that the cavalry's moving around the gully now, kicking up dust and dirt. You can see the glint of armour and weapons. To be fair... Hopefully... Go on, you go. Yeah, that's right, you go, because I mean, I presume that he'll be able to communicate with her, but not vice versa, so... No, you can speak. Dragons can oh, speak dragons can talk. <laughs> I've literally yeah. spoken to a dragon. A gold dragon. <laughs> with her. Yeah, but she was um, in the form, right? Yeah, dragons can talk anyway. Alright. Think Smog. Think Lady oh. Greenridge as well. Think Gold Dragon yeah, without Lady Yeah. Uh, hopefully far enough back that we're not the immediate target. Yeah, okay. And then, as we get closer, I'm going to cast Greater Invisibility on him. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, Bear in mind that you would look like two floating organs. Yeah, I get that, but we're a lot harder to spot yeah. than the giant dragon, so... <laughs> yeah, cool. And Macra, are you up and close and personal in the front lines? Oh, fuck. Okay, where are you? Yeah, uh, probably somewhere He's near. He's in the wine cellar. Back <laughs> <laughs> the fucking baggage carriage, fucking picking out the 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 best supplies. Um, no, probably somewhere in between where uh, Lanier Ross and Elsaf is. But like probably with Elsaf to be fair. Probably just chilling with her. Yeah, Elsaf is like in a good like 150 feet from the action. She's pretty close because she has close range spells, but she's like not in the front rows. Yeah, Macro can stand there. Yeah, okay. He can pick up anyone if, if, they, if anyone manages to break through the front line. Because if it's a cavalry charge, most of the cavalry charge will come straight through the front line. So he'll just pick off some stragglers. Alright. He'll go find a bow from somewhere, like a big heavy bow. Yeah, alright. And there's that moment, you know, that... You've been there, Macro, that, that tension in the air, that, that static where... Most of the men at the front know they're going to die, but they also have that hope. And you see them all, the camaraderie, their shields up, their large tower shields built with wicker and bits of metal pushed forward, their spears resting on top, and they all look at one another as Issa, you can hear a voice, STEP FORWARD! And men begin moving forward with loud grunts 
and the movement to shuffle forward. Those of you who were near the line or dry now are thrust forward by the people behind you as the army begins to move. And and you see at the front uh, the baggage, or well, some of the servants of the army are running down the line, uh, placing lances maybe 10, 20 feet in front. And you see the men pass the spears behind, pick up the lances as they begin moving forward. And you're dragged along with this rolling motion. And in the front, you, you begin to hear it, that boof, 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 and that heavy cavalry charge. You see up ahead, it's just like a million drums going off. You feel the vibration coming towards you. Macro, can I have a wisdom saving throw? I just can't imagine cavalry charges being that useful in a world of so much magic. Um, oh, that's I'm, uh, I'm about to prove that they aren't. <laughs> I would like to ready a spell like a second before the cavalry hits the dudes. Yeah, yeah. I'm, saying, I'm, I'm doing that as well. Yeah, yeah no. Spells. So, ma yeah, Macra, once again, you remember that cavalry charge from the Fee Bowens that time. Your memory begins to lapse, you take a deep breath, your chest begins to shake and quake, you hold it back. Makara remembers, but he also wasn't anywhere near this hungover the last time it happened, so he, he is kind of struggling to care. Mm -hmm. He also right. knows that he's got some incredibly powerful spellcaster friends that are probably going to teleport him out of here once it gets a bit too sketch. Yeah, and you see both lines begin to like move towards one another, and it's that sense of the men moving so slowly, not exhausting themselves, just holding lances out, hoping for the best. And this cavalry charge speeding down towards them. And this is when the spells go off. But however, distantly, you all feel that pull of magic. You're not the only ones. The skies oh, begin to part. And you see rocks begin whizzing down from the sky towards your army yeah. as Meteor okay. Swarm is being cast. Um, um, okay, so we go with Lanero's first movie. Oh yeah, he's the first initiative. Yeah. Well, actually, um, I would like to hold until the battle has started a little bit. Okay, yeah, fine. So maybe, oh. you know, like 20 seconds or so after the first clash. Yep. All win. Um, Bearing in mind, initiative is just a loose... So by the looks of it, it's you. Something. Yeah, it's you, and then them. As you can tell, that the enemy have all rolled low, so that's all we need to really. I'm uh, going. I guess at yeah. this stage, he, he just holds a fireball for whenever the dragon gets a bit closer to the lines. So, Maisie, what did you say? You're going in. Well, how does stunt work? Because I've never. Oh, that's the other game. Don't worry. That is the other game. Oh yeah, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I've only just learned about that. Why haven't I done that before? In this oh, game? Don't, don't let it stop you doing something fantastic, though. Um. She's gonna go in on the on the charge as she sees the charge happen. She's gonna wait until they're getting fairly close, and then she's gonna Game of Thrones style strafe with the breath weapon. Oh, that's, that's gonna be extra effective. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah. Because before the cavalry hits the foot soldiers, Elsa is gonna turn to Macra and ask him, "Do you want to see fools die?" And then she's gonna <laughs> bring down a wall. Of First <laughs> infantry line, a hundred feet long. <laughs> comes down and then all of a sudden there's like the full strafe behind it. Alright, yeah, no, so as these cavalry begin charging forth, there's a wall of force just erupts and there's just a crash. Literally the wall of force just turns red as men <laughs> hit it constantly. <laughs> <laughs> then the breath weapon comes <sighs> I'm assuming the fire just burning the scorching, you know, Game of Thrones style like Drogo just coming down. Yeah. Roll it some style for some reason. You can click oh, it. Oh, it says it's run out, that's why. Elsa is having the time of her life. She's having a laughing fit as as the horses crash into the wall. Elsa, yeah. are we the bodies? <laughs> oh, it depends on how much fun you're having, Macro. It's alright, I'm fixing it, Todd. Oh, thanks, mate. I was just trying to roll until it got it right. Don't know, I'm looking forward to a horse tea, though. That's gonna be fun. Fuck, I should have sold me a horse. <laughs> there you go, I fixed it. Yeah. Still won't work. I don't know what you're doing. Just try to write. Right, so the moment I see that, not knowing that Elsa's going to do, because Elsa's obviously much closer ahead than I am, because I'm 900 feet further away than she is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I will cast the. Uh, <clears throat> well, which side do? Well, obviously, people see this happening. They're going to go around it eventually. Yeah. Well, what you notice is, despite the dragon's flame, despite the wall of force, 
the line of cavalry is just too long and to then get then, them all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the moment I see that, and the moment I see them like going around, are they kind of like converging around it, like? Uh, yeah, like you can see, after? you can just see like this shimmering image of Maisie's draconic form where it's invisible, and you just see an all wind been thrown left, right, and centre, like a little tiny stick figure in the air, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's a, and then just like a gout of flame going across the uh, entire army. Yeah, I'll wait 10 seconds or so and let them reform their lines and uh, as soon as I see where they're charging towards against mm -hmm. and where they're going to clash with our army, mm -hmm. I'll put my white dwarf there, designate all of the friendly creatures in the area to not be affected if they get within 30 feet and just a star appears and starts putting them all in. Alright, uh, we're not at the end of the round yet so we won't be rolling on that table, but... Uh, 17th level, so yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Orwin, and I'm assuming you then just hurl a fireball off of the top of the... Uh, uh, that was Simulacrum, but... Okay, yeah, yeah. Guess, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna... Yeah, fireball from the staff. Oh right, yeah, you bring your staff up, there's a glow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a couple of fireballs from um, mm -hmm. two Orwins on the other end of the line. Where they're trying to get around the wall of force. All right, yeah, and then just that area, that hundred foot area, like Elsa has created a killing wall. It is literally just a scorched wreck. All the men in front of the wall of force are kind of pushed up against it slightly, and from the men behind, you haven't realised what's going on. And you can hear men at the front being screamed. Of course, you, you kind of people are being crushed, and then they kind of realise and begin piling around it. And as the flames, the flames of Maisie's draconic form disappear. Then you hear the clash of steel, and then they'll thump as the right flank that you guys were unable to affect smashes into the side of the army. Men begin screaming, you begin hearing like the clash of steel, there's the sound of chaos. And right in front of you, maybe by about 30 foot macra, you just see a horseman go, hit, hit the guy in front of you, he turns to pulp. And then, but because of the force, the guy in the heavy arm swung left, right, and you hear crack, and he's instantly, his neck's broken. On the on the horse, he's like weighted in, strapped in. He's sprint flying around, and the horse kicks him off. Begins kicking men. You see a man turn his jaw, crack left right teeth go flying to your right left. Men begin screaming, pushing forward. A lance slides past your face, connects with one of Dolef's men, who seems to be some elf. Goes through his eye and rips part the top of his skull off. Blood goes everywhere. A man to your left brings up a mace and smashes another before he comes to you. He just goes flying off the horse. And as the horse goes flying past you, you just, it's a chaos. You just can't seem to swing. You've got men left, right, and center. You feel something sharp against you. You move, push him out of the way. And up ahead of you, you see a man, a human male, dark head, nor dragging, pale skin. He has a great broadsword. broadsword and, he's, and as his horse bears down upon you, it looks like he's going to attack you. Is this when the star can appear and put him back in? <laughs> that, is that is so banging. Did you want to do anything to this guy? What were you doing? Is he a child? He's got a broadsword and he's coming down from like a horse to smash this on top of you as he's riding past. There's not much I can do until he actually attacks me, I don't think. Okay. Oh, brilliant! So he ch as he goes, he just goes, Aah! and a man next to you, uh, uh, just uh, just a random hero, runs forward, cuts the head off of the horse, the, he the momentum of the horse hits him, turns into mush in the mud beneath, and then the man loses his broadsword, you just see him Superman over, and then land on a lance, the lance snaps, yeah, he rolled a natural one, and uh, <laughs> as he does, he crushes like two, three men beneath him, and you just hear him scream as a ton of men just begin putting the boot in, and cutting down with swords, and beating with maces and hammers, uh, yeah, and there's a bunch of men fighting around you, by the way, just like in a melee, one guy to your left tur turns around, and just crashes his sword on the back of one of his own men, and he goes, ah! and begins screaming in like, confusion, and then just begins killing him anyway. Just begins stabbing him on the on the back as he's on the ground. It's just an absolute brutal melee. Yeah, Macro's probably going to start moving his way out of this uh, once he gets a chance. Yeah, he should have some assistance from the star by now, I feel. Going to take one or two out on the way out. Okay, well, what are you doing? Is it a Mago in initiative? No, they just tell me what you're doing. Like, We're not uh, really in initiative. He'll take one or two. He, he like he'll, he's making his way out the thick of the melee because mm. he doesn't want to be part of it. He's trying. He's trying to stick with um, Alzath best he can and protect her, I guess. 
Okay, so you, you right, so you turn and you see Elzef's like surrounded by people, just pushing forward, and she's she's heavily armored, right? So what it, what's happening is people are like bumping into her, and you're being floundered about. But other than that, you're not being unarmed. So you, you grab men, you begin basically you're swimming, you're swimming through human bodies, and as you do, you feel <coughs> you take four piercing damage as you feel a sword slice across you, and then as you move on, I'm gonna roll this. <laughs> Then you'll hear the sound of the sky parting. Um, the meteor swarm lands behind. Um, can I have a dexterity saving throw from Elzef and uh, Micro? Oh uh, yeah, I don't want to fail a save against meteor swarm. I'm gonna immediately flash of genius this. Ah uh, yeah, uh, I don't think I'll fail. I feel like I might need to uh, arcane deflect that one. Mm. And it crashes down behind enemy lines. There's five or six of them. Doo -doo -doo. Men scream. Men on fire. At one point, as it wraps around you, um, Elzef, this burst, like burst of flame just heats around. Like, I'm assuming you take half damage, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in total, you, t you haven't got any resistances, so it's a total of 80 damage. Oh, that's half. 80 is half. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I do have uh, Mace's temporary hit points, though. Yeah, you do, and that's the same for Macro. Uh, 80 damage. Um, How much is the temp HP, Macy? I think it's... Oh, I can never remember. 13's ringing the bell for some reason. It is 13. Look. Charisma, but has it not gone up because you've leveled up, though? Maybe. Yes, it would have. So why is it now? Because isn't it level plus charisma? I've got. Yeah, he's he's thirteen. Yeah. Oh, it's just thirteen. All right then. So I take eighty damage on a pass. Yeah. Mhm. Mm That's rude. And at that moment, as you hear the ringing in your ears and you stand up, you see that there's a path that's been completely cleared. And you see Calvary and m members of Dolaf's army begin fighting to get into that part. Head towards Elzef, who you just kind of like peel yourself up, look around, and you, you see you're surrounded by allies, men that know that you're not to be attacked. Right. However, as the meteor swarm lands, there's a sense that you get, Laneros. Can you draw perception? That there's. Mm -hmm. You kind of look around you after finishing casting that powerful spell. You're literally glowing. Smoke and magical weave like rising off of you. And then you hear, So, so, so! We meet again! And you turn around to see fire like bursting out of his feet. But he's lessening it as he falls. Kind of Ozai style. And he lands with a heavy thump. Magma from his paws. And he says, Did you see that? I literally killed thousands of people! And I'm going to kill you now! And now it's just there <laughs> concentrating on the star in the yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, that's his teleport in. Um, Lyrus, what are you doing? Um, well, um, just a sec. Oh, no, it's alright, take your time. Get him dead. <laughs> You're like, kill my old character. Do it. Do it. Do it. Um, no, I'll just do what he did and skedaddle a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually teleporting. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, don't go. We were gonna play checkers. Where are you going? I prefer chess. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I don't know, just like 500 feet off to the right. Just out of the way. Yeah, he's like, I don't want to get less out of the area where there's lots of meteor swarms and stuff happening and, and more towards uh, somewhere yeah. where there's... Yeah, that happened right in front of you and there's just like a cloud of dust yeah. and flame, yeah. Yeah, and of course the entire battlefield is now like 
bright as hell, and I hope that half the army is blinded because that's what the star should do. Oh yeah, and men are still kind of like ah, like being dragged in and orbited, like like kind of sans rings at the moment. Uh, yeah, and so I want to go somewhere where there's a bit of cover. Um, if I've seen anywhere like that, because there's suddenly bright light in like a mile radius coming from the star, mm -hmm. so I want to be somewhere where I can find a bit of shade and a bit of shelter from uh, from that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and where I can have a bit of an overview. Uh, so maybe somewhere there's a, bit, a few trees or something like that and just jump out of the way. Mm -hmm. the for now. Yeah, that's fine. So you teleport maybe a, like, what, half a mile out? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, there's a brief moment, Maisie, where you're like looking down upon these this army of men. They're all on fire. And as the flames stop, you begin to feel stabbing pain up and down your body. Mm. Give me a second. With no... And you notice it after the first one. I'm going to apply the damages to your character. Mm. Alright, so you notice it. The first one hits you and you've, you kind of like veer to the side and Orwin you have to grab onto one of the frills to hold on and then you see it down in the crowd riding upon a horse there's just golden arrows whizzing up towards you I think we might have someone who's interested in me let us descend that you are and I think I could return a favour actually you get that one back I missed I also aren't, I'm not seeing any of the damages go on what, on your dragon? No, yeah, I've, got, I've still got 256. Don't know why. Is there any, yeah, there... I don't know why, which is really strange, because I couldn't click the button either, which is weird. Anyone seeing that on this token as well? I don't see HP on the token. Oh, well. okay, I think it's set to... Oh. I can see the damage pinging on the token with the module, but... Yeah, I know what's happened here. Morty. Not set as a character. Naughty. Yeah, you'd have to... So, Todd, what you have to do is double-click the token, not the char open the character sheet. Ah, uh, okay, makes sense. I'll do that now. Ow. Ow. I'm applying him. Ow. There you go. That's the damage that... He managed to do. So, Alwyn, yeah. you can see this as you look down. Little yep. prick just shot something at me. Let's go get him. Alright. Spend some sorcery points. I'm going to return the favour. Okay. And glass the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, around <laughs> where Dolath is as well, seeing as he's uh, riding on. Alright, so you just do it in the general area. It's hard to see what's actually going on down there. Alright, so you just go... You bring your hands up, and as you begin holding the red jewel, you feel it, and it the power surges into your body as the red jewel vanishes momentarily into your system, and you see Midgard in its glory from orbit, the curve, and then it zooms in. Layers upon layers of the satellite clearing the picture and picture and picture and picture until you see the outline image of the invisible dragon. You with your hand up and it, the target's over your forehead and it just moves away. And then there's a boom above you, everyone. Everyone who was there when they fought the god king in the desert notices something very familiar. The red beam coming from the sky as it and it just parts the clouds, turns the sky entirely red. And just hits the army. And there's just a continuous beam from the sky now. Basically drawing a line through the army. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the chances of that happening? <laughs> <laughs> and Macy, what were you doing? She'll go after Dolath. Yeah. Alright, so you're going to sweep down into the beam. Uh, well, she won't, no, but she'll wait until, obviously, there's an opening. Or, or if there's anyone else available to her, she's going to dive in. So, if oh, there's, like, a... anyone else she recognises around, Ali Aiden, any of the others, 
Make a perception check as the dragon. Can I, yeah, can I do det detect? No, there's a... Just use your perception check. Naughty. Alright. Okay. Yeah, well, no, but you look around and you do see someone familiar. Fighting in the front lines, a female figure. Iliana. Yeah, let's dive. So you're diving for her, yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, so you've been swooping along the main line and you can see that she's uh, riding past this bright light. You have to veer away from it. It literally, you can't tell what it is because it's so bright. But it's right there in the middle of the battlefield, siphoning men, burning men. And then to the right, you have to turn like the Millennium Falcon going through a cavern. Because you've got an iron cannon basically on your right and a white dwarf on your left. And you turn, <laughs> swerve between them and then slam down. And as you slide, men are just being pushed out of the way. Literally, your scales are smashing into these horses and these men, and they're just being knocked left, right, and centre. And as you land up towards her, are you going for the claw and bite? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go for the claw and bite. Remember me, bitch? You should have saved those beans. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, so the bite comes down, and she, she literally jumps off of her saddle, rolls, turns, and she... As she does, she draws her spear, and then the claw comes down, slams, and as it slams, it's not going to hurt you, but you slam down on top of a lance that was just on the ground, it's like getting a splinter, and then you like rip it free, and then you turn around with a backhand of your claw, and hit her clean in the chest and send her hurtling back. She like, is knocked off of a, like, literally like King Theoden in the Battle of Eleanor Fields, knocked off of his feet, and flung back, and then she hits the ground, skids, and you see a bunch of men run in front of her with shields. And they run forward, and they do go for a bunch of attacks. Oh, and if you'd like to cast a spell now, it'd be quite appreciated. Bet you are. Alright. As a bunch of swords and spears come up towards you, one runs past and manages to cut across your foot, drawing blood. Alright, so actual all win. Uh... Actual oh, shit. win. Whoa, was that Orbital Hardlight Cannon just the sim? That was the sim, yeah. Fucking hell. That was Wish Sim, makes sense. Yeah. I don't want the exhaustion levels on myself, so mm. <laughs> the sim can take it. Uh, I am just gonna lay into the crowd more, to be honest, uh, and make use of the staff. And do another 7th level fireball. Fireball. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, so you bring the staff up again, and you hurl it behind you, and it whizzes past, and you have to kind of, like, squint, because of the bright sun, literally about 200 foot from you. <laughs> <laughs> just siphoning men in as, as they try to fight away from it, basically. And it just boof, hits the ground, burns up, and um, oh, and at that point, you notice that someone amongst the army around you stands out more than the rest. And you see, you see him stand up, and this um, elvish form. You see his eyes black, and you see the smoke rising from his shoulders. And then he brings his hands up, points it towards you, and the black beam comes flying at you. Can you make a dexterity saving throw? No. This is why I spunked fourteen points of the staff. I'm going to absorb it. Nice. And as Disintegrate comes towards you, you go, Oh shit, bring up the staff! And it hits it. And you just begin fighting back. You're pushing back against the force and then the beam kind of siphons into it. I love that staff. Mm-hmm. Right, the armies deal damage to one another. Right, Elzef. Uh, I mean... Elsif this whole time is kind of just uh, entertaining Macra's notion to flee. She's like slowly walking with him. Mm -hmm. uh, like after the meteor swarm, she used two charges from the Rod of Resurrection to get Macra and Elsif back up with one heal each. Yeah. Uh, and she's just like slowly walking back. A any enemy that gets too close gets hit by two uh, cannon attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like one, one random guy does like a stray does make it through, sees you, comes charging forward, one hits the horse's chest. Which catapults him up. As he gets up, and you still get your back turned to him, 
he charges and the other cannon shoots him in the neck and knocks him to the ground. And I'm assuming back you're just attacking left, right, just <laughs> trying to get to Elza, right? Hacking Is there anything else you'd like to do? Probably raging. I feel like a rage might be useful around about now. Yeah, it will be. Just for a little bit of extra damage. Quickly find my chart. All right, so Elzef, as you're walking away, you see something in the distance, maybe about 200 feet away. You'd seen him before, and fire bursting from him. He's like, as you say, you're like walking like left and away from the battle. He's going straight towards it, and there's a brief moment where he's about 150, 200 feet, and he just turns as he's zooming towards the battle with flames bursting out of his hands and feet. And he sees you, then you see the flames sputter out, and then he falls to the ground, rolls, like almost like kind of hurts himself, and he goes, Oh, there you are! And then begins like flying towards you, you and Macron. That also gives him like a cheeky wink. Yeah, Ali Aiden's coming for you. All right. Um, there's a brief moment where you turn around, Macro. And you see a figure riding down towards you on a horse. I'm on a horse. Motherfucker, don't you ever forget. Yeah, he uh, he's coming fast. And is there anything you want to prepare for? There's not a lot I can do. I guess I can ready an attack to uh, decapitate said horse. Uh, what he'll do is, is he'll uh, set a blink just a couple of feet in front of him. So mm -hmm. it's pretty like an, an echo. Yeah, sorry. An echo, you mean? Yeah, an echo. Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, he calls it a blink, but yeah, oh, he'll just set an echo a couple of foot in front of him, like ten foot in front of him. So it makes it harder to understand which one he should be attacking. And as this figure appears, burn, cindered, he slides off of his horse, begins running, and with a flash of yellow and gold light, a bow appears in his hand. Um, I would like um, to use an action mm -hmm. uh, to consume the Starlit Stone Elsa still has for Macra to get an, what was it, an 11th level spell slot? Oh dear. Oh god, oh yes. Dear. So you bring up the Starlit Stone. Fuck, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm casting 11th level code of called at Ali Aiden. It's not. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ali Aiden's flying towards you. The look of excitement on his face. The look, his hair's whipping past flame and heat, and you see this magma pouring from his paws, and he just hearing go, I am the fire soul! And then you just bang! A blizzard from another world comes out of your palms. <laughs> Uh, that is, it's 5th level, it gets 68 on top, that's 14d8, uh, let me just oh roll that. Oh my god. Jesus. And LSF turns to Macron and is like, I can only do this once, so watch this. <laughs> oh god. Oh, that's, I mean, it is what it is. No, yeah, well. Oh, I get another, I get, uh, I get my, uh, I get another d8 from. Ah, oh, a one face. <laughs> <laughs> it's still good. I just wanted a cold spell, you know? Does he get some extra bonuses because it's such a high spell? No, I just oh. gets upcast with 1d8 per spell level. That's annoying. You'd hope he'd hit some uh, ultra mega levels. Yeah, insta freezes. <laughs> if we mm. kill this guy, Macro, the loot we, we get from him to sell is gonna. I'll try this stone. Yeah, so you <laughs> just hold out both your hands and the cone just pours out of you in a swirl. It's literally like the void of space, but in blizzard. That's how cold it is. And as it strikes him, you can't see in front of you as it just appears. And then when it fades, you see he's spotted and then landed on his feet. And he looks down at himself and he looks up and there's icicles all around his beard and he just plucks one out and then begins picking at his teeth. Nice try, asshole! Flicks it to the side. Macro Mace face. Alright. Alright. Iliana stands up, 
brings a staff around, slams it around, and goes to cast Divine Intervention. He's level 17, so let's see what happens. I'll roll it in public. Uh, well, that is as far away from any hours I could ever get. <laughs> That's right. because you didn't get the head if she had had the head, you know? And Ali Aiden brings his hands back and he says, You have cold, and I'll show you fire. True fire! And then you see the magma appearing in his hands. And he goes, Look! And he seems to be juggling, and he clicks his hand, and then you look above, and a waterfall of magma just comes pouring out of nowhere. Can you make a dexterity saving throw, please? Uh, Macra and Elsa have both got advantage on it. I'm using a three oh, charge from the Amulet of the Sentinel. Uh, mm -hmm. What saving throw was it again, sorry? Dexterity. dexterity. I got advantage anyway. Thank oh, you. so I'm only using two charges then. That's a half damage. Half damage from Macro, yeah? Mm hmm. Uh, 19, shit. <laughs> no, that's that's fine. Take half damage. Okay. Oh, that's that's not a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. Uh huh. Lanieros, anything you want to do at your, at your range? Um. From where you once were, you see a blast of, like, what looks like white snow, and then you see a blast of red come back. Yeah, I assume there's still lots of fighting with the armies going on, so... Uh... Yeah, basically, I have a damage track. Mm -hmm. And um, let's just say that Dolas Army's doing the most damage. Yeah, I hope you're taking into account that anyone within 120 feet of that mm -hmm. star is blinded, whereas our army is not, so our, mm -hmm. our army would have advantage there. Oh yeah, on that side it and, looks uh... a little better. Plus there's a golden dragon on that side. Mm -hmm. The other side um... ain't looking good. And it looks like the golden dragon, as well as uh, all when... And that side of the army are being like enveloped from the other side. Looks like it's folding around them and pushing them down the gully. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. No, I'll just keep the star going and uh, hide. <laughs> yeah, we can make a stealth check. Yeah, just find a good tree or rock or something just to be uh, out of line of sight, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that star is insane. Hey. <laughs> Yes, I've got range. Someone would have to know I'm there to look, even look for me. So I, oh. I'm pretty sure Alain can find me. But, uh. Oh yeah, no, he could if he wanted to. But I think yeah. he's more distracted now by mm -hmm. by eleventh level spell. <laughs> yep. All right. What about all in amazing? Um, that side that is trying to fold around and push them down the hill. Yeah, it's quite far hill. away. And push them back. <laughs> Glass them. How far can you move it in one turn? Uh, I think the full 500 feet. Alright, yeah, so. All along the uh, the army, taking out lines and lines and lines. It, it, it feels, as you're doing it, that you're taking out, like, hundreds of people. You are literally murdering hundreds of people here as they are killing as it goes along. But where, as you're killing, there's just more and more that fill it. And you look to your left as you're holding onto the dragon, and it just seems... His army just doesn't stop. It just keeps piling in. You're now... Technically, I'm manslaughtering a lot of men. It wasn't premeditated. Right. They started this. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me... So, here's the gully here. Here's, like, the wall of force. And here's, like, the dragon. And the star. The, so, and here's your kind of army fighting here, yeah? And now all the mm -hmm. men, all the all Dolas men opposite this wall of force are fucked. They are being killed. But then the army's folding, like like his army. Actually, it should be more like like this. Like it's folding over and coming up from behind. It doesn't take much for you to realize that you're denting them. Like your army can't hold on much longer. All right. Let's cut off the head of this fucking snake. You there, bitch. Here's you. Hey, uh, you talk to Ileana, yeah? Yeah. yeah I'm wouldn't... calling you out, you fat slut. <laughs> oh my god, 
And what are you doing? You can uh, ro roll a d6 to see if your thing recharges. Oh, yeah. Did I just roll that? I thought it was an action. No, you can... No, no it, it just happens. Yeah, at every... You have to roll a d6 and see if it recharges, obviously. Oh, so I just roll a normal... Yeah. If you roll if you roll a 5 or a 6, you get it back. No. Nope. Uh, okay, so he'll he'll dive at Iliana, I guess, ignoring George and spe Spears in the way, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, go for a multi-attack and also everyone in the area, like literally everyone with Frightful Presence. Yeah, yeah, no. I was waiting for that. So a lot of the men that were attacking you do back off. And then we'll have a tasty little bite. Oh, nice, ooh. Right, yeah, you throw her to one side, slam down on top of her. A naughty little claw. She on? Oof, that hurt her. Did you off, Owen? <laughs> Owen's used his turn to move the orbital light cannon, right? That's Owen. So like having a burn. Owen Junior. Yeah. Alwyn Jr., yeah. Mm. Okay, what are you doing? Uh, I am going to uh, show this cleric how to do it properly mm -hmm. and utter a prayer to Tempus. Uh, he said he wanted to be called only in a time of war. Well, this is probably the best war he's going to get this century. Right, so you mutter the prayer to Tempus and uh, Iliana turns and she dodges and does actually manage to get an attack off and it scrapes across the scales and then you see a spiritual weapon come down uh, as she casts and as she goes to cast she looks to the right and it looks like her hand's frozen where it is and then you see her armour and her weapons shatter and rust. She stumbles back, and right in front of you, you see everything that she owns. That armor, weapons, and then she falls to her, falls to the knees, begins holding her neck, falls back, and begins writhing on the ground. Um, like the, big, the big fucking snaky, like gold dragon neck, like bends back over itself and looks at Owen. What the fuck did you do? Well, it's not exactly the way I thought it was going to go, but bloody hell, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, you feel this power rush through you, Owen. And as you look to your right, all along, you see the first line of men that were struggling to defend all suddenly transform into avatars. And they all have huge great swords. They turn, swing them, and they just come in cutting through the front line like butter, like hot knife through butter, and they begin moving forward. Looks like you've got about maybe a hundred of these what look like avatars. They all very much look like the Tempest that you know. Alright. Sounds good to me. Shards well spent. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, killing Eliana. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Alright, Macra, this this Dolaf in front of you looks intent on fighting you. Um, we're gonna have to have a scrap then, aren't we? And hope that I don't die a tragic death. Um, I imagine I'm still raging because I've just been attacking shit yep. that's been close by. Mm -hmm. Um, have I got a currently got an echo up or has that been popped recently? Uh, no, you've got one up if you want. I've got one up, so I'll, I'll start with a second wind. For some sensual healing. And uh, let's go mano or mano with the this elfy bastard. So a bit of the Thord's Cord's Thundercock on him. <laughs> I knew I should have never named it that. Reckless, of course. As I beat him with my large cock. And then a uh, bit of action surge goodness, I reckon. Uh, yeah, you swing. And you cut across uh, his chest, and then swing again. 
um, hitting him clean and then knocking him off his feet slightly. Uh, but he seems to be agile, nimble, and he's <laughs> pathetic. All right, then, son, and then he'll uh, swing at him twice again. He hits. Um, is that currently adding my rage damage? Do we know? It isn't. So oh no way! It the... it is. I put it in. Is it plus? Two, is it uh, is it adding the plus three now? Because that's going up now from plus two to plus three. Let me have a look. I don't know if it does it automatically as I level up. Let's see. Oh, it's called Thunder Block plus three weapon, yeah. Yeah, it's plus three to all attack whilst I'm raging now. Right, so twenty. Five, three. Oh, no, it's not there. There you go. I put it in. I'll add that in. So we. Uh, I think that's me done for it. Uh... So, about, so I'm still a bit away from him, if mm -hmm. possible. Attacking him through the the echo like this. Yeah, and as as he stands back, uh, when you go swing again, he ducks beneath, draws an arrow, spins it in his fingers, and stabs it clean into your chest. Can you make a charisma saving throw? Is this into the echo? Because it's the nope. echo that's next to him. He doesn't. He seems to ignore it. Um, I should get an attack of opportunity then if he's gone past the echo to attack me. Well, you mean he sure. stabbed the echo, and I've still got to make a charisma. So, so no, he just went for you. He just seems to dodge, dodge, duck, and then go straight for you. All right. Do, does the echo not get an attack of opportunity then? No, I didn't think it did. But I don't think that could. It does get an attack of opportunities, but it does do, it does get them? But has he has he got something that stops no. attacking of opportunity in it? All right. No. Okay, I got attack of opportunity then. That's 22 from that, and then he stabs you with an arrow, and then a charisma saving throw, yeah? Mm-hmm. So, that's 19. I will arcane deflection that as well. Mm -hmm. so Mm-hmm. Alright, so as you pass, he looks 23. super frustrated with that. Do dodges under another swing that you go for, brings another one out, stabs you on the buttocks with it. Can you rake roll another charisma save? That's cheeky. Do I get that plus four again, or is it just that last one? Just that last one. Cheeky. Uh, good roll, please. Um, ooh, do I get advantage on this using some inspiration? I think I do. Um, where was I tricking into? Ah, there's, that's where I was keeping inspiration. Uh, where is it for advantage? Just one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, where is it to auto automatically pass? Isn't there a certain amount of inspiration? Not on my game. I thought in your game that was a thing. Right, okay. Um, advantage. Oh, wow. And there's a brief moment where you feel weightless. And Elzif, as you turn around and you see you're about 100 feet away, and you see Macro just disappear. And then Dolaf spins, turns around, draws his long his longbow, just fires at you. Your AC is. Let's take two turns in a row, and he's just disappeared, Macro. Yeah, he just banished him with a banishing arrow. Oh, fuck yes. Uh, my AC is 27 at the moment. All right, so as you turn around, you bring a shield. Doof, doof, two arrows, he action surges. He's going to go for four more arrows at you. The second something he uh, hits, I'm shielding. All right, something looks like he's going to hit. I'm that shielding. Make sure AC... Uh, 32. All right, yeah, so that misses. <laughs> uh, well, reflex off the arcade shield. Um, in fact, after that, he will start not sharpshooting. So that one hits. I need to work out the damage because there's no sharpshooter. Did I? Oh, it's not going to matter anyway. Never mind. Minus nine. At the start, I regretted like not giving you any of my saving throw helps, but like looking at your rolls, none of no, nothing I could have done would have even helped. Yeah, not going to help at all. Four plus nine minus nine, and then the next four. What the fuck did I do there? You were on fifty six, weren't you? Minus nine.
Yeah, so as he starts, the arrows stop coming in as strong, and they seem more pinpoint, more accurate, and the joints in your armor are being hit, and then then part of your leg, and then you're being cut left, right, and then he seems to back off slightly and take a take a breath. Fucking sick of macro game. Fucking banished. He even too. Fucking. <laughs> All right. So, um, Ollie Aiden says, "No, no, this is my fight." Bursts up into the air, stands there, begins casting. Ali, and Ali Aiden's turn was after Elsof's turn, so Elsof gets a turn before Ali Aiden gets his next. Did turn. I? Oh. Yeah, well, he then. blasted me after I couldn't have called at him. So. Fair enough. You can take your turn then. Yeah, I'm casting fucking Resilient Sphere on myself. Alright. And have my cans shoot the guy. Alright. One shoots at uh, Dolaf, the second one. Mm -hmm. Oh, the second one? Yeah, the second one shoots at Dolaf. Fair enough. Where, where Trying to get Macra back from concentration. <laughs> it's, I wish it was, it's not concentration. Oh, well, that's shit. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all I can do. Hide behind my resilient sphere. Alright, so Maisie and Alwyn. Alright, let's get that breath weapon, yo. I can't deal with two high level characters. <laughs> Even I don't have the resources. <laughs> yeah, so you have your breath of. Uh, your breath weapon back. Should we focus on the large army in front of us? You're muted. Sure. <laughs> sure! <laughs> <laughs> of course, fucking of course. <laughs> uh, alright, let's do it. Mega strafe. Is it gonna make a dent? I did it make a dent last time? A little. A little. Uh. Yeah, what you notice, though, from where your position is, most of the men that aren't those avatars that Owen summoned are kind of running back down the galley. They're they're running. All right. Let's look at oh fuck. Uh, I'm not. I'm sure. I'm can Maisie use her advantage here? You should have said before. Ah, okay. Then no worries. Uh, I'm guessing she can't see anything of note. Nope, not at the moment. Uh, take flight. Um, good Arwen. Potentially, the army is running away. Should we focus on the big bad wolves, so to speak? I'm stuck on your back here, so take me where you will. Well, can you see them? Because I can't see shit. It's so difficult to find anyone or pinpoint anyone at the moment. There's just a wave of glittering. And not to mention the amount of light coming off of uh, the star. And being magnified like a magnified glass through the wall of force as well. <laughs> I wish I hope Owen Simulacrum has like a different accent. Like, no, 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 my friend, I can't see shit from up here. <laughs> <laughs> All I can see is the fucking bracken. Uh, Alright, then in, in which case... Um, I guess if they're running and there's no point in really chasing them, then we look around, I guess. I suppose we spend a turn. Oh my god, I rolled a 28 again. Yeah. yeah I think Orwin's still gonna fire some stuff off while yeah. Maisie locates. She'll fly low for your proverbial benefit. Yeah, same thing. You're just. You're saving. Basically, what happens is you end up five all in a point where you see men are attempting to run or fight for their lives. And as you do it, it gives them an opportunity to back off or attempt to, like, disengage. Yeah, that's fine. It's more for my own benefit to reduce the number of charges of the staff so it doesn't explode when I absorb something. <laughs> if you were proper men, you'd be back here. <laughs> what about Lanira still concentrating from far back? 
as long as the star is still useful in the battle, and that's uh, by far well, the best. It thing looks I can like do. you've done your damage. The men that were coming from behind, like, have pushed the rest of the front into it, and then they have learned from the mistake. Like, it's now being avoided completely. Mm -hmm. Like, from a couple hundred feet, people aren't near it. But you can see it's churning up and killing most of... It's killed most of the um, charging men that had already run into it or been dragged into it. Uh, well, I'll start moving a little bit and start uh, moving back towards where I saw... Um, <coughs> presumably, Elseth and Makarov fighting. Uh, mm -hmm. But keeping a respectful distance just to observe what's going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see that there's a fight going down, but it's quite small from where you are. And your high perception, your elvish perception, is allowing you to see there's blasts of magic and arrows being exchanged. Yeah, so I want to go from maybe being half a mile away to just, you know, making my way over there as mm -hmm. uh, as turns pass. That's it. All right. Thorin's old Macra appears at the end of his turn, kind of like, Dwah! If that's the first one, that's the... Simulacrum, you should have said. Oh, sorry. Well, so I'll just do them the other way around. Just have them, just have them at the same time. Alright. Uh, well, it's just the third turn. Cannon. Oh, That's yeah. the last of that. But I'll cut another 500 foot line through the retreating ones. Yeah, I'd say at this point in time... You have the biggest kill count, followed closely by Laneros. <laughs> yeah. So, as... It's not about the kill count, Liam. Well, at the moment... You're better than that. What do you Unless want me to say? Inputs a kill streak mechanic, in which case AC-130 above. <laughs> 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 Right, so Macro, uh, you you are floating, incapacitated in the astral realm, in the astral plane, and then are suddenly yanked back as you see Elzef. What are you doing? Um, do what did the fire soul do? Uh, it seems to be backing off, cackling. Oh, Elzef just uh, takes the potion of supreme healing. That's thirty-six hit points back. Um. Uh, since the sphere is still up, uh, the de death can just keep shooting the fire soul. Mm hmm. Alright. Yeah, I mean, he. He notices what a resilient sphere is, of course. And it's just retreating, and then begins yes. soaring away. Yeah, Elsa has no uh, intention of fighting fair. Nope. You notice Dolaf seeing you in a resilient sphere, his eyes. Resilient Sphere isn't the magical one, is it? It is everything. It is everything. It's yeah. only only Disintegrate gets through. Right. He seems to face step away, land upon his horse, and then begins riding off back into the fray. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, I, can't, I can't hit you in there. So get, get off jail free card. Put up Resilient Sphere, half cannons, shoot whoever you don't like. I mean, yeah. Well, well, just what, fire another eight arrows and they break? He's more intelligent than that. He's biggest retreating away and laying into the back lines of the men. And at this moment, it's not looking good for your army. Yeah, who gives a shit about the army? <laughs> yeah. All right. So as a group, what what are you doing now? Uh, well, once it looks like both are safely away, uh, Elsa sees if she can spot them. And then drops a resilient sphere, and then casts uh, Meteor Swarm on both of them. On who? What? On Dolaf and the Fire Soul. She just—it's a one mile ratio. Both are very noticeable. She just drops a meteor on both, right, and the other the... three on whatever army remains. All right. So is this a scroll? Yeah. 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 Okay. So first things first, a perception check because Dolaf isn't that easy to notice in amongst. Isn't he like on a big men. horse on on fire? No. What, what was he? Hades? I, I thought he also had fire effects. No, Ali Aiden flies around using jets of flame. He's easy to spot. Don't oh, yeah. just rides a... shadow effects. He had shadows coming out of his Yeah, head. I had like shadow effects. Oh, before yeah. I do that, uh, I want the bonus damage, even if it's very little. I uh, activate the Void Soul. I think the Void Soul would have fun here. 
Oh yeah. He does say that. Oh yeah. Uh, the perception check I'm using inspiration to get advantage. Alright. You can see him like shooting men down as they begin retreating down the gully. Okay, Meteor Swarm is 20d6 fire damage. I assume Arlen is resilient to that. Uh, that's the fire damage. And 20d6 bludgeoning. <laughs> what the hell? What? So you. That was so. Alright, so let me just do this for the lol so that's you can see the numbers. So what is it? 3.5, so 35. <laughs> <laughs> just very slightly under Well, Ali Aiden immediately is hit with one of them as it knocks him out of the sky. It does nothing. It heals him, then does bludgeoning. The exact same damage. Shit. <laughs> Brilliant. No, wait, it does, it does eight of. It does another six damage from Arcane Firearm. And it does eight damage from being the Void Soul. So he does take eight necrotic damage. That's. Perfect. It's just funny that it was 64-64. To Ali Aiden, it's just like, boop, boop. But he is knocked out of the sky with it. And um, as the other one lands... And of course, there's more fireballs that just hit the army somewhere. Yeah, I feel like getting hit by a meteor. meteor. I'm, I'm way more concerned about the bludgeoning rock effects rather than worrying about a bit of fire that might be coming off it. That, sp that spell's a bit broke. Alright, it looks like you've done some damage there, and especially when they land and amongst the army. And Maisie, you begin swooping around these as they collide with the army. And as you part out the cloud, and you realise the devastation you've done, this is more than you could ever have hoped, the group, ever hoped to do. And then you burst out of the smoke, wings on furl, to view just the army that goes onto the horizon beyond it. Right. What, what what what's going on? Well, we've killed. Well, we've killed all Do the. Do we see anyone yet? <laughs> By anyone? Yes, there are like a hundred thousand. The people. important people. Come on. Currently, you can't see any of them. Uh, the meteor swarms just knock them out of the sky. One out of the sky. Good point, actually, we've just seen a meteor swarm come down on the enemy. So hopefully, we can assume that that might pinpoint us to where some important people are. That was are. what I was about to ask. Yeah, presumably it's the only two people standing in the meteor impact zones, <laughs> which which are an eighty feet uh, diameter. So I'm you could easily pinpoint. Them. I'm also going to say it's obscured because the amount of smoke. But uh -huh. yeah, and rubble now all that resting upon them. Could I? Uh, Percept it. You can look for them, yeah. Ooh, I'm just gonna roll detect. It's the same thing. Oh, it's not the same thing. And it's a legendary action. You can't use it. Well, I think he sees. Yes. Yeah, so, with your draconic vision, you can see uh, at the front line, someone has landed in amongst your men. And it looks like Ali Aiden. And he's got both arms out, just spraying magma in a 15-foot cone. And he's turning, and all the men are just melting and turning into piles of gooey flesh. However, there is a distant crater where men are running down into it. Uh, when I say like men, I mean like all types of different types of races and um, soldiers from Dolas' army. And you see him struggling up. And you see a load of men run, bringing round shields up above his head, forming a sort of turtle formation. Right, I'm going to go fuck them up. Alright. All about Get everyone. Nice and close. Alright. So we got Elsa I, res... I can't roll breath weapon again because it's obviously oh, you should roll every turn to see if it recharges though. I did, but I rolled it last turn and I got it back, so Oh okay. Yeah, well, I have it. It's every turn. Yeah, you can roll it every turn. Oh right. You didn't I, use I it didn't last use turn, it. So... Yeah, oh, I didn't okay, use it last so... turn, so I'm using it this turn on, on Dolath. Alright, cool. I just can't roll, roll it. Oh, I need to. I'll fix that character sheet for you, by the way. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah. So as you f do a flyby over, uh, what about the entire the rest of the group? Are you just doing what you were doing previously? Because, like, I know Macross just come back from being banished. Yeah, it's gonna take me a while to get to. Uh, yeah, it will. Group again. Um. As Maisie flame breaths, 
Mm -hmm. and hopefully clears out this shield wall. Uh, Alwyn felt like having a friend. He's going to try dominate monster on Dolath. And I'm going to heighten it so he's got disadvantage on the save. Yep. Alright, so the just a line of fire just clears these men, and as they all fall down, you see Dolas casting a spell, and immediately you go to cast Dominate Monster, yeah? Yep. And I'm going to click this, so you, you know, and I'll reveal it to you. Real. You won't get affected because it's not a mind reading spell. Because, but as you go to cast it, you realise it doesn't affect him at all. Okay. Uh, and then as Maisie gets a little bit closer and flips upside down, Owen's <laughs> gonna poke him in the coconut, bonk his face with the staff, <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> plane shift him. Oh my god. Uh. Oh, is that a charisma saving throw? Yep. Did you go? Uh, and, did you go and look at his character sheet? How am I <laughs> supposed to do that? Wow, well, you played him. Uh, you just know that charisma is his weakest shit. <laughs> just. I assume that a lot of his stuff, other than Dex and Con, is weakest shit. Um, can, you can't apply sorcery to a staff, right? Mm, not sorcery points. Shame. And you're just gonna like swing, and then crack him around the head with the plane shift spell, yeah? Yeah, I yeah, I mean, you have to touch him for it. So yeah, just pokes him in the face. Do you have the reagents? You need the reagents. That's the thing. Uh, I don't think so. From a staff. Okay. Who went from a staff? Uh, let me spend the points. For some reason, all the staff spells that we set up are no longer available. Oh no, they're at the bottom of the spell book, yeah. not on there. Yeah. Nice. So, where is it there? All right. So, where do you send him? Uh, probably to like the nine hells or something. All right. As it's not particularly nasty. Whatever. Hold on. I'll do our Arcana check for Orwin's knowledge of the planes. Yeah, pretty good. So, yeah, the nastiest place that all winners is capable of thinking of with a 22 in the moment. Pandemonium? Sure. <laughs> right, so yeah, as Maisie flies upside down, and you just... It's not less a bonk, it's like a crack. Because of the speed that Maisie's going. And he's hit, and you see his face turn, and then he just fades. Disappearing. <laughs> nice. That's two out of three. Uh, why am I talking about that? That's two out of three! <laughs> <laughs> and as he fades, and you see the armies begin to still fight, like, obviously, the enemy army doesn't know that their generals or their leader's gone. They just keep pushing forward. Keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward. I'm going to go ahead and end that session there, as both, well, as Dolas' army's pushing on, and the rest of your army, well, not yours, but... Uh, the Broken Empire's army is retreating down the gully and trying to get away. You've still got a line of about 100 stone-like avatars cutting their way through. But that's the situation nice. we're leaving right now. I'm presuming, just because of sheer amount of kill count and XP,